Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Two Worlds Meet. One Punch Man x Tensira, by Blackrock Shooter 5000. Chapter 7 The Deep Sea Amidst the Bustling City, an enormous octopus monster, part of a mysterious group called, the Sea Folk, loomed over buildings, sending civilians fleeing in panic. Unfazed by the chaos, Saitama casually reviewed his grocery list. Saitama mumbled to himself, cabbage, broth, shrimp, manila clams, greens. It sure has gotten crowded around here. Unbeknownst to him, the aquatic menace declared its presence, teasingly asking, what ahead? Are you related to an octopus by any chance, muahahaha? Only when the monster met its abrupt demise, its upper body obliterated, did Saitama take notice. With a nonchalant expression, he surveyed the scene. In the aftermath, civilians gathered, discussing the hero responsible. Random Civilian 1. Wow, I heard it was that guy again. Random Civilian 2. Really? Isn't he often seen with those new S class heroes? Random Civilian 3. Yeah, the Destroyer, and the Tyrant, even Demon Cyborg. Random Civilian 1. What's up with that guy? Random Civilian 4. I heard he's dating the women. Random Civilian 2. No way. They're way out of his league. Probably just hanging around them because they're S class. Random Civilian 4. Yeah, you're more than likely right. In the distance, a young man on a bicycle, clad in armor with brown plating covering his torso and shoulders, pedaled forward. A black leather suit peeked from beneath the armor complemented by black gauntlets and knee pads. His ensemble was completed by a green bicycle helmet and dark shaded goggles. Frustration etched on his face, the mysterious figure muttered, Tisk, damn it. I missed him again, regretting yet another missed encounter with the bald hero. Hours passed, and the same person found himself in what appeared to be his own secluded space, poring over information about Saitama. So, he's the one seen with S-class heroes frequently. All of them are new, yet he remains a mere C-class. Strong, though. I have to keep up. Determination resonated in his voice as he prepared to close the gap between their rankings. Saitama's place in the lively household, Genos and Rain were tackling the chore of washing dishes. Genos, utilizing his incineration cannons on low, dried the dishes, while Rain, with blue hair flowing, diligently washed them. Milam lounged on the couch. Rimuru in her slime form on her lap, indulging in chocolate and watching Veldora on the news. Zalerio delved into technology, dissecting its workings, while Obera immersed herself in manga. Meanwhile, Carrera enjoyed a shower in the bathroom. Genos, checking his hero phone, broke the news, it seems Master Saitama is now class C rank 2. Milam, with a touch of sarcasm, remarked, wow, how amazing. He sure is getting close to you all, huh? Gino's eyes glowed orange, his body heating up, ready to respond, but Rimuru intervened, that's enough, you too. Good grief. On the news, the anchor introduced the new S-class hero, Veldora, who had recently rescued children from a monster. Veldora, in grandiose fashion, boasted, ha ha ha, it was nothing. I, the great Veldora, coming in like a storm to vanquish all evil. Ha ha ha. The audience showered him with admiration, women expressing love, and men cheering, as Veldora flaunted his muscles and struck anime poses. Veldora sure has gotten famous, huh? Milam remarked, savoring another bite of her chocolate. Yep. And his ego has grown because of it, Rimuru replied with a sigh. As they continued watching Veldora on the news, showcasing his flamboyance, large amounts of steam billowed from the bathroom. Carrera, now refreshed, walked out wearing no clothes. That felt amazing, she commented, feeling relaxed. Genos glared at her, reminding her of Saitama's warning about the water bill. Quit being a killjoy, tin can, she retorted, causing Genos to scowl. Carrera proceeded to rummage through Saitama's clothes, donning a yellow hoodie with Opai written on it in black joggers, without bothering with underwear. Genos, ready to reprimand her, was interrupted by the sound of the door opening. The man himself walked in. I'm home. Saitama declared. Welcome back, master. 
I hope all is well, Genos greeted. Hi, Saitama sama, Rain chimed in. Yo, Rimuru waved. You're finally back, Milam remarked. Saitama kun, where do you get such comfortable clothes? Carrera asked, toying with the chest part of the hoodie. I get them from. Wait a minute, why the hell is there so much steam in here? Saitama realized. Master, she was using up the hot water. Again, Gino stated, glaring at the blonde. What? Saitama shouted in horror. In my defense, I didn't realize how much time had passed, she said, avoiding eye contact. A bad defense, and yet you still decided to say it, Saitama deadpanned. Don't be like that, Carrera playfully retorted. Her nonchalant attitude toward the water bill visibly irked Saitama. That's it, come here, he yelled. Saitama proceeded to chase her around the room while everyone else sat back and watched. Is it always like this? Rimuru questioned. You have no idea. But it does make it so it's never boring, so there's that, Carrera explained. By the way, where's Testarossa and Ultima? After Saitama's and Carrera's little scuffle, I figured I needed to send them off so they could get stronger as well. I don't have to worry about Diablo, he'll find his own way. The news channel shifted from Veldora to an A class hero battling sea monsters. Ring. Ring. Asterisk simultaneously, all the S class heroes' phones rang as the channel changed. Rimuru inquired, What is it? Hello. City J. Genos questioned, placing the plate he was drying down before walking away. Don't worry, I'll beat the monsters with ease, Milam declared. You dare call me while I'm playing? Carrera said, agitated. You all sure are busy people, Saitama remarked, wrestling with Carrera. Genos, walking back and putting his device away, reported, Master, it appears that a group of monsters called the Seafolk are running amok in City J. They want me to go and dispatch it. Same here, I'll help, but I'd prefer if Saitama beats the leader to get more credit, Rimuru suggested. Everyone agreed with no pushback, smiling while looking at Saitama. I'm fine with that. That also means I won't have those weekly quotas to do. I'm going to test out my new upgrades Dr. Kuseno gave me. The rest of us will defeat the other monsters coming from the ocean, Rimuru told Saitama, transforming back into his human form. All right then, let's go. Oh, and Rain, watch the place while we're out, he instructed her. All right, she responded. They all then headed out to City J. If I don't include something that happens in the episode, it's because it happened exactly the same. So there's no point in showing it again. That goes for future parts too. As they approached City J, Saitama and Gino sprinted, while the others soared through the air. Soon, they split up, dispersing to various locations within the city to eliminate the monsters. Gino's informed Saitama that he would forge ahead to pinpoint the boss's location. Rimuru, Milam, and Carrera effortlessly dispatched the lesser monsters. This continued for a while until they arrived just in time to witness the aftermath. Genos and Moomin Rider defeated, while Saitama stood on the verge of defeating the boss. You did well. Now rest up. I'll take care of this fish freak, Saitama reassured Moomin, laying him on the ground. The Deep Sea King, offended by being called a freak, struck Saitama on the back of his head, creating a shockwave. My, my, you're still standing. Impressive, he genuinely praised. Your punch just lacked power, that's all, Saitama casually remarked. I'll kill you, the deep sea king yelled angrily, throwing a punch at Saitama. In response, the bald hero moved so fast that it seemed as if he disappeared. Simultaneously, he delivered a punch so mighty that it dispelled the storm, instantly defeating the monster. Everyone would stand there in shock, except for Genos, Rimuru, Milam and Carrera. They would all be in a good mood, expecting people to thank and praise Saitama. However, an ugly ass, fucked up haircut having ass, eyes droopy as fuck, and looking like he looks both ways before going into a porn store comes out of the damn aether, to ruin the mood. Ugly ass. Maybe that monster wasn't really all that tough. Random civilian one. I. What are you saying, didn't you see how many heroes went down from that thing? Ugly ass. Maybe they just weren't that tough. Random civilian one. Maybe, when he took it down it didn't look all that tough. Ugly ass. They may call themselves class A, S or whatever, 
but it seems like their titles don't mean a thing, he he he. Random civilian too. Come on those guys risked their lives for us. Ugly ass. Risked their lives. Anybody can do that. But a hero has to beat monsters, I mean. As he continued speaking, Rimuru felt disgusted by the human's words and actions. However, this was nothing compared to how Milam, Carrera, and Genos felt, all on the verge of losing it. This guy sure is fun at parties huh? She said sarcastically, with a menacing Arua. I'll like to have a talk with him, Milam said. Before any of them could act, Saitama would beat them to the punch. Ha 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 ha, today's my lucky day. The rest of the heroes weakened it making it easier for me to beat it, what child's play piece of cake? Good thing I was late, barely did anything, now I get to take all of the credit. I go spread the word that I beat the monster, it was me. If anyone says I won because I got here late, I'll kick your ass, he lied. After hearing his words, the people started to call him a fraud, and saying he took all of the credit from the other hero's hard work. Random Civilian 1 I, he's the same one who's always with those S-class heroes, the new ones. Random Civilian 2 Yeah, you're right. It makes sense why he's always following them now. That's why he's going up in rankings so fast. Random Civilian 3 What a cheat. If it weren't for those other real heroes, we'd be dead. Hearing Saitama say this left the other four in shock, however, that shock swiftly transformed into rage for most of them and annoyance from Rimuru once they realized what he had done. Saitama began to walk towards Genos. Damn, you got messed up pretty bad. M Master? Huh? Saitama would then notice, the other three walking towards them. Hey G U. Before he could say anything, Milam jacked up his shirt pulling him close to her face and yelling. Why would you do that? Huh? Saitama raised an eyebrow, looking at her confused. He would then look at the rest of them, realizing how mad Carrera and Genos were, as well as the displeased look on Rimuru's face. The slime would quickly notice his confusion, before explaining to him why the three were so upset. Saitama, the reason we let you fight the boss was so that you could get recognized and people would think highly of you, he explained. But now that you said that, People are going to wrongfully think badly of you, and WHO knows what else, Carrera yelled, getting involved. So tell us. Why did you do that? Milam would ask in a more hushed tone, but the weight of her question still there. Because the other heroes put in all that work to try and save them. If I didn't do nothing, they would have never gotten the credit they earned. They all went silent after his explanation, as he continued, and besides, I don't care what other people think of me. I do this hero thing as a hobby. Now then, let's get going. Some hot pot sounds nice right about now. The bald man then started to head home, while a drone would come and pick up Geno's, so he could get repaired. The other three would look at Saitama having similar thoughts. Underscore master. Underscore underscore Rimuru. He doesn't realize it, does he? Underscore. Underscore I'm afraid not. Underscore, Saitama. Just because you don't care what others think, Milam pondered silently. Doesn't mean that we don't. You have no idea how much we care, Carrera's thoughts concluded. Emerging from their thoughts, Carrera addressed Rimuru, My lord, please allow me the pleasure of punishing that vile human. You may, just don't kill him, ensure it's a punishment he'll never forget, for being so ungrateful. Understood. She said, bowing. After that Carrera and the ugly bastard would disappear, nobody noticing. While all of this unfolded, Zalerio and Obera hovered in the air, observing. My impressions of that human have improved, Zalerio commented. Same, however, he's going to have to realize he isn't alone anymore, and what doesn't affect him can affect the people around him, Obera added. That's going to be pretty challenging, given his solitary past and the loss of most of his emotions due to his overwhelming strength, Zalerio explained. Well, he's going to have to catch on sooner rather than later, she concluded. They soon ended their conversation and returned with Saitama, Rimuru, and Milam. With Carrera and Ugly Ass the Ugly Bastard was absolutely terrified right now. Looking up at Carrera he could not only see, but feel how pissed she were. Hi. He couldn't stop his body from shacking from pure fear from her first word. Despite the smile on her face, the veins popping from her head wasn't helping. I said hi. Ugly Ass. HH hi. Remember when you said. Anybody can do that. 
referring to putting their life on the line to save someone else? She asked. He would only nod, still unable to move, from utter fear. All right then, let's get started, she said ugly ass. Wa what are you gone? Did I say you could speak? He would go dead silent after that? Look at how pathetic you are. Making my Saitama look so bad, you utter trash. She then smiled and said. There's a reason I told them to call me, the tyrant, and you're about to experience that firsthand. Venom and hate was in every word. He couldn't do anything, but stand there in horror. A loud yell would be heard from the ugly ass, as he was being punished by Carrera. The next day Saitama and Gino's returned from the grocery store, each carrying bags. A drone dropped off mail at Saitama's place. What's that? Saitama inquired. The city is too dangerous, so they use drones to deliver our mail, Gino's explained. So the post office has drones? No, it's the Hero Association. Gotcha. The public sends these to heroes, they're like fan letters. Oh, are any of them for me? Saitama asked curiously. Yes, the cyborg answered. Coolness, let's take them inside and open them. Genos picked up the box and brought it inside with them. You're both back, Milam remarked. Yep, and we got this today from the Hero Association, Saitama responded. What the heck is that? Carrera questioned, looking up from the couch. It's letters from fans, Genos explained to the primordial. All right then, hand them over, she retorted. They all started to look inside the box. Genos had a blank stare after reading his. Milam blushed after she read hers. Rimuru's face was masked with horror, and Carrera just ripped the paper up. Like I'll ever go out with someone like you, she muttered to herself. Ah, that was so nice, Milam said, smiling. Absolute creeps, Rimuru muttered under his breath. Underscore they're just admiring your beauty master. Underscore underscore you're only saying that, cause it mostly came from guys instead of girls. Underscore. Underscore you have no proof to back up that claim. Underscore underscore all right then, this one was sent by a girl. Underscore. Underscore I, say something. Underscore while all of that was happening. Saitama was about to open his first letter, and it revealed a simple message. The others, upon seeing the negative message for Saitama, were either pissed or irritated. I will find out who sent it, Master, Genos declared, his body heating up. Count us in, Carrera said, cracking her knuckles. Right, Milam agreed, here's a guy with free time. They all stopped and calmed down, realizing Saitama wasn't affected by it. The bald hero then noticed another note for him. Genos was behind him, his cannons ready. Carrera pulled out her gun. Milam conjured up fire to burn the paper. Rimuru just had a neutral yet serious look. Seeing what the letter said, they all stood down. Seems someone's thanking me, Saitama stated. They better, Carrera added. Must be someone you saved, Genos told him. Hell yeah, good going, Saitama, Milam cheered. At least someone is, Rimuru said to himself. They all shared their thoughts. Afterwards, Saitama found a promotion letter from the Hero Association. He left to do yada yada yada, eventually getting promoted to B class. Amai Mask watched a clip of him defeating Deep Sea King with a thoughtful expression. Heading home, Saitama stopped at a restaurant to get some food to eat. House special, please, he told the server. Server, coming right up. Care for a drink? Saitama looked to his right to see, Moomin Rider. If you're not drinking, at least let me buy your food, he offered. What for? The bald man asked. For your promotion. Let's celebrate. It's not easy for a C class, especially with those weekly quotas. He joked, pointing at his promotion paper. Saitama would smile at him and say, Yeah, it sure is, and thanks. Sure thing. They would then enjoy their meal for the night. Deep in the ocean. So, he's the human who defeated the deep sea king, huh? Kukuku, splendid. A mysterious water entity observed Saitama, assuming the shape and figure of a woman. 